Caravan. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She yeah. reckons that there was ghosts in that in that shop. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, because she used to hear knocking on the door like it was a thick solid wooden door. It had a distinct sound on when you, like when you knocked on it. Yeah, and she wow. goes, someone knocked on it. Wow. She goes, that's why I went to the door and opened to have a look. And there was no one there. And there was no one there. She said other times you'd have both doors closed. So the front door of the shop was closed and the back door was closed. You had the, the front bench yeah. and then her back room and then there was a partition there and another like little kitchen area around yeah. the other side of the partition. Between the partitions she had a curtain there. You know, so because she can just walk in you know to the kitchen area or whatever. And she said at times, she said, you know, it's like someone walked past me, just flicked it. And I felt like a little breeze go past me. And then that was it. And ah. um, it was quite common around that area. That's it. On okay. Union Road. Yeah, Scotland, yeah. Well, yeah. Yep, yep. Do you know any of the history of that area or? I'm not 100%. Yeah, I'm not a hundred percent, but um, there, there were other wouldn't. shops around Flemington, Kensington. Yeah, were probably some old bookies or something from Flemington. They kind of because oh, no. a lot of it was cattle yards too. You were on Kensington. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, there was another shop that was mm. around the corner from there. Someone you know who lived upstairs or something. Every morning their shoes would be you know, right next to the bed because you know um, or near the door or something like that because whoever was in that house just. Just like to position yeah, the shoes. Yeah. yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, I'm moving out. Thanks. All good. Yeah, no. <laughs> no I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Not for me. Yeah. I'll buy some new shoes, fuck it. Because, <laughs> yeah, they'll probably connect them. You know, if you end up moving out, they might have connected their soul to the shoes and then just start travelling with you. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. No, it, it, what, it, yeah. yeah, stuff like that, man. It not freaks me out, but, you know. It, it's something that's out of control. Yeah. When you think about it. In yeah, some yeah. ways, like, you don't know how. Yeah, yeah, If yeah. it's a malevolent force or it's friendly, but like, you just. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the thing. I, I, I've had, I did, I have had a, an, an experience yeah. once. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, um, I remember one night we were at my ex-father-in-law's place. My ex-mother-in-law, I, I never got to meet her. Yeah, yeah. But she passed away in that house. Mm. And, um, you know, one night we had a party and I've gone to bed and everyone else was outside. Mm -hmm. And I've laid down and as I'm like laying down, I had my hands just over over my chest yeah and had my eyes closed and i felt like something just circling around the top of me yeah yeah and then pinned me down so i couldn't i couldn't get up i couldn't call out nothing yeah yeah but i'm semi awake to it yeah. and i'm trying to call out i couldn't call out and then in my head i like i felt as if it was her mother yeah okay yeah telling me to look after her daughter Mm. And I'm like, yeah, I'll look after her, look after it. And then I've just gone, like, I've used all just, my strength or whatever. Yeah, and just yeah. gone, boom, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that was it. Mm. Like, after I said, yeah, I'll look after her, whatever, it's like, you know, she's like, yeah, all right. You, you know. Were you still, like, terrified or at peace with that at that time? Um, A bit of both. Yeah, wow. A bit of both because, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm not yeah. the only one that experienced that in the house either. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, my ex-father-in-law, he used to experience that too. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. That's unreal. Like he used to just, or someone just used to sit on his chest and he couldn't get up. You now he just used to like only wiggle his feet and that was it. It's like a form of paralysis, basically, when you yeah. think about it. Like that's, some people would have that, like, I don't know, the, the, the spirit world, they call it paralysis, they call it something else. Like people are just kind of in a dream and they can't actually wake up from it. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, I've heard of. conscious of it. Yeah. I've heard of quite a few people with that. And, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, trippy. Yeah, it, it yeah. is trippy. Yeah. Because anything, anything I've, I know, or like that I've experienced, is that me and Beck, we actually done a, like a ghost tour in an insane asylum or prison that's in Ararat. Oh, shit. The Ararat prison. Oh, so. My brother's actually working down there now. Oh, there you go. Yeah, he's yeah. Um, helping build something or whatever there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so now it was, it was, for it was last predom better. predominantly <laughs> used as a prison in late 1800s through to early 1900s, and then it was turned into like, they referred to it as a, uh, insane asylum or mental yeah, institute yeah, yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. So you had a lot of those, you know, those type of patients um, wandering the corridors and all. But during the tour, we saw numerous things. Well, numerous things happened. So I had a, a digital SLR, like a camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And basically, I've been I'd been using it with absolutely no issues whatsoever, other than one thing. Like we went to Hawaii and you know to take some shots and like it was the weather was a little bit humid so like the, the sensor just it, it um it, it turned the camera off which is fine. yeah well and basically from that from that point on that was like five minute five years prior to us doing the tour yeah we get to the location and then we as soon as we get into the front door to like sign in and all my camera stuffs up it turns off 
And I'm like, are you fucking serious? And I've gone to back, back my camera's just turned off. Like there's been absolutely nothing yeah. wrong with his camera ever since I've had it and yeah. it's just fucking turned off. Yeah, as soon as you go in. Yeah, and so like we're sitting in there waiting in the waiting room, turns on again, it's all fine. Then they do like a, a meet and greet and they tell you, you know, it's it's not uncommon that some people's mobile phones may be fully charged and as they're going through, suddenly it shows up there's no charge um, in the throughout the complex. Yeah. And sure enough, throughout the whole complex, you would have you'd be you'd go into the main cell area and upstairs the, they would have all the cells were open and say there was like 10 of them for at least two of the cells um the camera same thing it, it, it did off. not work it, it just like you tried taking a photo nothing happened and i'm like this is fucking really bizarre but yeah. so there was that and then at one point I've gone into one of the cells and you know just to get a feel for it and as you're walking out i felt like there was someone that either went like you know how when people sigh and they like <laughs> and they just like that like that deep that <laughs> nose comes yeah the, the the breath comes out of their nose yeah, or yeah. they like that like <laughs> like that i heard that over like my left shoulder and i was like oh that's i don't like that that's creepy and then from just the left side of my body just felt Fucking ill, like not like someone had punched me in the kidney or anything like that. Or, but it was just like like a, oh, like a chill. Yeah, it was like a chill, but just an, an an ill feeling. So that happened as well. And what else? There was a this was a freaky one because we'd gone downstairs into the main kitchen, mm-hmm. and at the same time there was uh, in the within the group of people there was someone that was like a, a clairvoyant that was there, and he's he's gone. Uh, did um, did someone? Did someone die here? And the thing is, the the tour guides are like, look, you know, we don't know the exact details of, of specific incidences, but you know, some people have felt A, B, and C, like in this area. But that's whatever you're feeling. That's what you feel. That's what you go with it. That's yeah. what you go through. So you had the main kitchen area, and there was a door that led out to a corridor that went left. And at the end of that corridor, there was a small bathroom that had like a, the original bath there, but they used to use it as a smoking room, like yeah. the smoked meat and all that. So when you when you open the door up, all the ro- the whole fucking walls and the ceiling were just like black soot in, in, yeah, in, yeah, their, yeah. in their presentation. And it just looked like, ah, yeah. terrible. But anyway, that room in particular, apparently seven people had died in that room. Right. And this clairvoyant has gone, Seven people died in this room. He goes, yeah. And then we were just like fucking amazed that he was able to pick that up. And then, but the tour guide actually confirmed that, that there were seven deaths yeah. in that room. But then going back into the kitchen, prior to going in that area, basically what had happened was, is that we're standing there and they're giving a spiel about the kitchen itself. And me and Beck, there was there was two other doors like leading to storage rooms, like a bakery, yeah. like we're with the bakery and um, you know, other storage room. But we saw a black object go from one room, straight into the other room. And I've gone, did you see that? Did you see that? And she's gone, yep, yep, I saw that. And I'm like, fuck, that's crazy. But then that cl- the, the clairvoyant, he's actually gone, there's a little girl in this room and she's looking for her mother. Jesus and, Christ. Yeah, and basically that's a, what it may have been. It may have been the little girl that she was always calling out for her mother. And then we put two and two together that basically like the tour guide ended up saying, something in relation to that potentially the mother might have been one of the victims that was in that room, like down the corridor. Wow. So yeah, that was one of the things um, we said, and we're just like, Argh. My sister's a bit yeah. like that. Not a clairvoyant or anything. Sometimes she can see people that have passed on and she can see them as clear as you know, as what you can see me. Yeah, well. Mm. Yeah, she's had a few experiences and like it's, freaked me out. We were overseas a, a few years ago. It's like she's got a bit of a gift. She can mm. read the coffee cups. Oh, like tea leaves and stuff like that? Or, yeah, it's or similar. Yeah, okay. But yeah, with yeah. with the Greek coffees, you've got that bit of the mud on the bottom. Yep. You know, you swirl the cup around, you tip it upside down, let it sit for a bit so all, all the mud drains through. Mm. And she can sort of read it and, I don't know, it, yeah, well. it's a bit of a gift, but I don't agree with it. But we are overseas. She went to my cousin's mother-in-law's place. The lady there, she, you know, my sister goes, you know, I'll read the coffee cup, blah, blah. She's made out as if, she can read the coffee cup, but she's seeing someone there right next to her. Like right? guardian agent type thing or, or gu- yeah. Someone that had passed. Yeah, yeah. Right? She goes, oh, I could see a, a young young guy in here. He went by this nickname. And the lady's like, fuck. She goes, that's, that's my husband's nephew. He died 
in the military. She goes, yeah, fucking, he had a car accident. So it's like he's telling my sister, but my sister's making it out as if it's in the cup. Yeah. She's telling them. She goes, he looks sad. He was about to propose to a girl. It didn't end up happening because he had his accident. He's sad because he he didn't get to do it and she's moved on and she's married someone else and the lady freaked out because she's like how does how would my sister know this yeah, 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 you know, yeah because no one knew it she was telling her everything and then after my sister came back to the house and like she's told me she bawled her eyes out she goes it, it just drained me and i felt sorry for, you know for the bloke she goes will she goes i didn't see the cup i could see him there and he's telling and he me he was communicating through yeah you. she was communicating and through him, uh, and yeah. it's not the first time even another friend of ours her uncle passed away he came to my sister and he said mm -hmm. tell nikki the house up on the hill there's a box in that house and the box is hers my sister said to her she goes listen she goes your uncle came to me yeah no worries no worries no worries mm -hmm. and um ended up going to the house found this box and it was the deeds to the house unreal yeah there's a lot of unquestioned shit man yeah oh, i got um where i used to work doing um the fitness equipment my boss's friend she's clever went. i had i had a reading with her and what had happened was is that probably maybe it might have been 12 months earlier i'd actually lost a friend from yeah. high school yeah during this during this reading there's a well, similar thing, like there's someone in the room with you. And I'm like, okay, and it's, and it's, yeah, letter starts with K, it starts with K. And I'm like, oh, so Kate. She goes, yeah. So it was a, a friend of mine, Kate, that had passed on. The, she had a message a message for me and she the message was, um, it's your time. So I'm oh, like, she okay. So yeah, I'm like, it's your time. Nah, not like it's your time to pass away. That would have been my like, oh, fuck. Yeah, that would have been <laughs> my I was like, it's, it's your time. It's your time to take charge of your life. Your time, your time to take charge of my life yeah, and, yeah. And, and grasp it with two hands. She goes, there's fond memories of a brown couch. And I'm like, okay, all right, what's going on here? And sure enough, like in our staff room at Metro, there was a brown leather couch and it was used for, as like in, as a staff room, that couch, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of laughs and all that during breaks or, you know, when we're all trashed and yeah, we were yeah. just congregated in this fucking room that's literally half the size of this garage. And it was a sick bay, so you would always walk in with people, yeah. like just fucking, you know, killed over, you know, from being drunk. Yeah, basically, she, you know, she remembers fond memories of all that type of stuff um, whilst we were working. But then she also, there was mention of a, a ring. And I'm like, okay, I don't, I, honestly, I don't know anything about a ring. We're, we're just friends from, from, you know, primary school and high school and then end up working together. So yeah, there was a ring that was brought up in the conversation and then, and pretty much that was it. Two days later, I ended up getting a call from a guy that I used, that used to work at Metro as well. Um, and I, I had not seen him or spoken to him in five years. And he's basically- <laughs> Fucking just get a shit out of me. No, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Mate, that, that scared the shit out of me. What's that? Huh? Oh, the phone? Yeah. You go about the ring and then... Uh, ring, ring. And then the ring and then the ring. <laughs> oh, <laughs> far out. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, she made mention of a ring, knew nothing of it. You know, two days later, as I said, I had a, a friend of mine that he used to also, he worked there when, you know, at the same time about, you know, me and, me and Kate were working and had not, had not spoken to him um, five years, mm -hmm. hadn't spoken, hadn't called, hadn't messaged, nothing. Pick up the call, had a chat, and he goes, oh, by the way, of, um, he goes, uh, do you know Kate's mum where she lives at all? Like, and you know, what her address is because I've got a little, I've got a, like some makeup and jewelry box from Kate when she was, the last time she was here. Yeah. Like had it for like five years. And there's a, um, yeah, I just want to give it back to her. And I'm like, hey, no worries. And I'm like, no, I don't. And I'm like, he goes, yeah, there's like a, there's a, a ring. There's a ring in it. Oh, jeez. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, well, is it a, like, I'm like, are you serious? And he's like, yeah, there's a ring. And I'm like, is it, is it like a, it's got like a, a pink sapphire um, diamond in it or whatever, whatever they call it. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, it does. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? Yeah. So it was like, it was legit in the sense that um, I, whether it was chance, whether it was whatever it was, yeah. it just let, you know, it was mentioned two days ago to me that there was a ring that, you know, that yep. Kate must have wanted back or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And was probably trying to get through to me to, to get it. Yeah. But yeah, maybe it was successful in yeah. that sense that like it ended up going back yeah, to her yeah, mother. Yeah, it might have been see. her mother's, so. And there you have it. I guess there's some things in life that we'll never understand until it's our time for the lights to go out.
But if you've ever experienced anything, be sure to put it in the comments below. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next Harper's Podcast.